Hi, this is Bobby Edwards from Bridgehead Software. You are viewing part one of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cachet based EMRs for hospitals. In this part, I'm going to cover an epic environment. I hope you find this valuable and I would appreciate your feedback. So please send it to our Twitter handle at BridgeheadHDM. You can also follow us on our website at www.bridgeheadsoftware.com. Again, this is a cache epic backup recovery overview, part one of seven. This is the agenda for the seven parts that we're going to discuss around this situation. The first one being an epic environment. The graphic here includes most of the major infrastructure components that you'll find in an epic environment. The major components are the operational databases or the OLTP environment. These are in the lilac color. The analytical processing or OLAP environment, this is in the pink color. The application processing servers, these are highlighted in aqua. The presentation and connection servers, and these are in a light blue. And lastly, we have the client layer, which is in the orange section. For business continuity planning purposes, this is the starting point for discussing how to do a coordinated recovery, whether at the file, volume, server, or site level. This is typically termed tiers of criticality. So some of the servers and end user devices that we're going to discuss during this presentation are around the cache environment or the OLTP environment, the clarity environment. In this case, uh, we'll be discussing SQL, but this could also be considered to be an Oracle. And then we have our presentation and our client devices that we uh, are going to take a part in this as well. So when we discuss this backup, the goal is to consider four basic scenarios and really to have a symmetric design for recovery. So if we look at the four of these scenarios, these four scenarios, uh, we have normal operation, operation if the DR site is unavailable, operation from the DR site, and returning operations back to the primary site. So obviously the focus in each of these environments is going to be to discuss that. For normal operation, the focus is to protect the primary site data and enable data recovery or failover to the secondary site. A couple of questions that need to be addressed is how is the data backed up and is the secondary site integral to the backup of the data? Um, if the operation of the backups if the DR site is unavailable. Again, the focus here, how to continue protection of the primary site and enable recovery to restore the secondary site to operation. But if the secondary site is integral to backup of the primary site, how is backup going to be performed prior to restoration being achieved? And if we are operating from the DR site, or the secondary site, the focus here is to minimize the reconfiguration necessary to run live at the second site. And any plan must include a backup for the data at the DR site in the event the system does have to be run from here. The goal here, prevent data loss in a failover situation. So you failed over to the uh, operate at the second site, but now you're unable to back that up. So any new changes that take place need to be captured. And of course, lastly, returning operation to the primary site. The focus needs to be minimizing the transition time back to the main site, preventing data late, data loss, excuse me, and again, minimizing user impact. So we also need to plan for the different types of recoveries that may be necessary, whether it's a data element loss, a file loss, storage loss, or the loss of a location that requires a failover. So the starting point for discussion about recovery is what elements need to be protected and what data can afford, if any, to be lost. Where in the data architecture is the data vulnerable to loss? Is it the logical layer, physical layer? Maybe it's in both. Once established, we can determine what method or combination of methods will provide the most consistent and efficient means of backup and recovery. Data elements and files are generally placed into two categories. These are typically referred to as structured or unstructured data. Structured data is typically part of a database, such as Cache, Microsoft SQL, or Oracle, depending on the particulars of any given environment. 
Unstructured data is usually stored in standalone files, and these may or may not have accessible metadata. These may be associated to a database as logs or journals, scanned images, and the like. Structured data associated to cache in Microsoft SQL or Oracle as part of the database mechanism, some capability of recovery logging at a transaction or time sequenced element update level. Cache, as implemented by Epic, uses these as well as shadowing that enables an additional copy of the cache instance to exist and be updated in real time. These are very valuable elements to ensuring recovery. Depending on the choice of Microsoft SQL or Oracle and the configuration options deployed, these environments can be recovered using similar capabilities combined with the data recreation potentially from an ETL, Extract Transfer Load, from the Report Shadow Server. Backup of these elements utilizing the Epic Cathay message for freeze thaw and similar Microsoft SQL or Oracle capabilities including VSS for creating consistent quiesced copies of the data is critical to creating application consistent backups. For instance, in addition to the cache.dat files, a complete backup should also include write image journals, time sequence journals, and journal logs. Unstructured data recovery associated with Windows or Unix and Linux may be best achieved using a combination of backup, or volume level cloning and granular data replication, such as archiving. Data within a file structure on both the Windows or Unix and Linux architectures will require planning for the platform in use. Consider that virtualized server environments can benefit in recovery from quickly recreating the VMware instance, but without planning, a corrupt server will simply be migrated between platforms. In the Unix and Linux environments, the file structure is based within a volume group which is created from the physical storage layer. The use of multiple physical drives consolidated logically by the OS into volume groups, which are then defined as logical volumes, where directories are defined and have a file system laid on them. This can create gaps in protection for recovery purposes unless an awareness of the relationship between the file ar architecture and the storage layer is understood. Data residing in the file structure can also be vulnerable to loss within the storage layer. Within the storage layer, the most common element for failure is an individual physical drive. The use of RAID will help to minimize but cannot eliminate the possibility of data loss from this environment. Volume cloning helps with the recovery of individual physical drives. This recovery capability becomes more significant when two or more physical drives are combined into a meta volume group within the storage layer. Backup is often the least disruptive method for quickly recovering the data loss occurring from a physical drive failure. Lastly, we need to consider that the data also has a vulnerability from external and non-IT related events and these can cause data loss as well. A combination of backup and archive methodologies based on a particular system, type and significance of data is required to provide for data recovery. That concludes part one of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In the next part, I'm going to cover bridgehead recovery architecture. I hope you found this session valuable. I also encourage you to follow Bridgehead on Twitter for notification on future presentations at Bridgehead HDM. Again, our website is www.bridgeheadsoftware.com.